And I'm going to begin to wrap up now. Um, so the, the U.S. lacks a coherent policy vision for rural education. But the same can be said of U.S. rural policy in general. But I think a critical rethinking of educational policy in the, in the rural context might help to suggest new ways of envisioning educational practice that enhances the vitality of rural communities and clarifies a U.S. rural policy. Ultimately, this discussion challenges us to revisit the purpose of education, which I've sort of been you know, circling around this entire talk, really. So rural development debates, in some respects, have some striking parallels to education policy debates. The rural development policy choice can be broken down into arguments prioritizing equity or efficiency. So proponents of efficiency arguments tend to argue that in comparison to urban economies, rural economies are less competitive and that free market organization implies that capital flows, including human capital in the form of migration, from rural to urban places, they're appropriate and desirable given the higher returns on investments in urban places. In this respect then, rural communities are not as valued as, as intrinsically valued as social spaces, and the best policy choice is to further enhance the mobility of human and fiscal resources instead of throwing good money after bad by continuing to subsidize economically lagging communities. By contrast, equity proponents argue that the policy choice emphasizing efficiency will inevitably lead to continued inequality and the devaluing of community. The relation to the, to the educational policy debate should be fairly clear in the ways that schools and schooling are understood. Are schools best understood as interchangeable sites of human capital production, best managed and controlled by standardized means to increase competition and efficiency, or should we think about them as intrinsically valuable and socially meaningful places of community engagement, providing not only education, but also collective identity, strong community agency, and other economic and social benefits. So I've tried to suggest here that by reconnecting education with community and locality, while at the same time embracing the innovation and flexibility required to successfully navigate a complex, uncertain and globally interconnected world, we can reframe education's purpose in more democratic terms. These terms ultimately are a way of not only reimagining rural educational policy and rural educational leadership, but also reimagining an approach to rural development that rests upon the democratic potential and the collective capacity of our rural communities. And, um, and so that's, that's my stump speech in this election season. <laughs> <laughs>